Hi, I'm Sabine Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Coreless Hall Effect Current Sensors. I'd like to thank Itai Iluz for carrying out the FEA simulation based on the FEM package, which is an open package, highly recommended. There are some relevant videos to this presentation, current sensing in power electronic systems and current sensing by Hall Effect. Here are the links and I'm going to print the links on the page of the YouTube video that you are now watching. Here are some popular methods to measure current. The classical one is to use a shunt resistor. We have a resistor passing the current through it and measuring the voltage across it. This has the disadvantage that at high current level, the power dissipation of this resistor becomes excessive. And also there is a problem to channel the current into the resistor if we are talking about a high power system. Another method, which is based on a sensor, we are passing the current through this sensor. This is a contactless sensor that it, it's isolated and the, actually the magnetic field affects the sensor and we are getting an output which is proportional to the current. Another method, which is going to be discussed in this presentation, is actually to put the sensor adjacent to the current. That is, you don't have to pass the current through anything. You just have to put the sensor close to the conductor or bus bar that is carrying the current. Both of these are actually based on Ampere's law, which states that the circular integration of H over a circular path is equal to I. I, in this case, is the current through the conductor. A classical way to measure the current without contact using the magnetic field is actually to use a toroid, which is a concentrator. It's a ferromagnetic material. One of the videos that I've mentioned discusses this method. And here, here's the current through the conductor. Here is the ferromagnetic material. This acts as a concentrator and here is the sensor which actually is sensing the magnetic flux density passing through this uh, concentrator. This method has a disadvantage that it's really, this uh, turret is really bulky and then you have to have a conductor that you can actually put inside this uh, toroid and then there is a problem that the magnetic properties of this toroid, this toroid here, will affect the sensitivity and linearity and it becomes a problem especially when you like to go to very high current there is a problem of saturation of this material and also problem of high frequency response the method that we are going to discuss in this presentation is actually based on placing a sensor on top or close to a conductor, here is a bus bar carrying the current, and here is the sensor. And the idea is to capture the magnetic flux which is surrounding the conductor according to Ampere's law, and sensing it, and then generating a voltage which is proportional to the magnetic field, and therefore proportional to the current. So the basic uh, parameter is the magnetic flux density, which is related to the magnetic field by the permeability. This is the relative permeability. This is the air or vacuum permeability. If we are talking about air, no core here, then the magnetic flux density is equal to the air or vacuum permeability times H, which is related to the current through the Ampere's law. Now the permeability in air is 4 pi 10 to the minus 7, this is Henry port per meter. And uh, we're talking about then the magnetic field and uh, the magnetic flux density, which has the units of Tesla. Sensing of a magnetic field is today done primarily by the Hall effect sensor. The Hall effect sensor is named after Edwin Herbert Hall. He invented it in 1879 and in recent years there are many devices which are based on this principle. So what is the whole effect? Here we have a slab of a material which has this uh, effect enhanced. They are, they are 
families of material of this kind. And in this case, we are passing a current through it and the unit is exposed to a magnetic flux going this way, magnetic flux density going this way, B. And due to the Hall effect, there will be a voltage generated here, which can be measured. Now, this voltage is proportional to the magnetic flux density, B, going this way, and the current. So, by exposing this sensor to the magnetic field, you can actually measure the current indirectly, the current of the conductor, which is close by to this sensor. So, here is an example. Here we have a bus bar and there is a sensor sitting on it. I'm assuming here a bus bar of this dimension, 15 millimeters, and this is 4 millimeters. Here is the sensor sen sitting here. Obviously there will be a PCB or something like that. And I'm assuming that there is a 100 amp passing through this bus bar. Okay? Now, the total length here is about 50 millimeter. There's 50 here, 15 here, and then there on the side, and it's a little bit larger than that. And H is I over L, L is this circumference here. And then B is mu sub zero times H, which comes to be 1.25 10 to the minus 6. This is mu zero, 100, and this is the magnetic path. And I find that B should be around 2.5 millitesla. And indeed, using final element analysis, using the two-dimension FAM package, we find that for this particular case here, we find 2.7 millitesla. That's pretty close to what I found in this very, very rough calculation. Okay? So this is the kind of field that you, magnetic field that you expect around a conductor, say, 100 amp. Now, there are a number of sensors which are based on the Hall effect. One of them is this particular unit by Melexis. This particular unit has a sensitivity in the direction parallel to the IC surface. Okay? That's not all the units uh, available on the market have the same orientation of sensitivity. This particular one is sensitive to a field, magnetic field, which is parallel to the surface of the IC. This unit has a fairly high bandwidth, 250 kHz uh, specified here, and here is a general description of the internal structure. This is the Hall effect. The Hall effect produces a fairly low voltage, so you have to amplify it, and then also it's sensitive to temperature, so there is a temperature correction. It's a fairly delicate measurement here, but it's all done within this unit, and then you get an output, which is again proportional to the magnetic flux density passing through this unit, through this Hall effect uh, unit. Now, usually these are programmable, so that you can program it uh, to regarding the sensitivity and some for linearity, and these are fairly sophisticated units available today. And here is part of the data sheet. This, there are many versions here. This is the low field version, which we need because the intensity of the magnetic flux is rather low near a conductor. So here we have uh, the range for which this unit is uh, sort of supposed to be operational is minus 7.5 to 7.5 millitesla. So in our case, for example, if this is uh, 2.7, then uh, for a current up to 500 amp, uh, this unit will be okay. And then we have the sensitivity, which is programmable, as I've said, it's programmable between 100 to 700 millivolt per millitesla. Okay? So this is just an example. There are other companies who are making similar devices. This is just shown as an example. And here is a finite element analysis of a case in which we have three bus bars, say representing a three-phase uh, inverter. This will be like the output current, the phase
phase current. And what I'm showing here is one unit is actually conducting 100 amp. And I'm pointing out to the fact that the magnetic field generated by this unit will affect adjacent sensors here and here. And the extent of this uh, magnitude is not small. We see this is 2.7 for 100 amp, and here we got already 0.8, there's no current here. So the coupling here and the cross dock quite a bit, so something has to be done in order to reduce it, otherwise uh, the measurement here will be sort of uh, affected, highly affected by the nearby bus bars. Okay, so you need some sort of a shielding here so as to isolate or shield the one unit from the other. As an introduction to the shielding issue, I am introducing here the concept of reluctance, which I think helps to understand what is really going on with this uh, shielding. So, starting with uh, Ampere's law, in the case that we have, say, an conductor passing a current I, we have a magnetic field here, magnetic field density here, magnetic field around the conductor, around the current. And let's assume that I have here air, and here I have a ferromagnetic material, a piece of ferromagnetic material, which has a relative permeability, which is much higher than one, that is like a ferrite or some other ferromagnetic material. Okay, so now if I write Ampere's law, I have to take into account that if I'm sort of encircling here the current, I have two parts. One is passing through air and one is passing through the ferrite. So it's H times the length of the path here in air, the H in the air, and H, the magnetic field, in the ferrite times the length of, of this ferrite. Okay, this is the length of the ferrite. And then again, definition of B, and then I can write by expressing H as B over mu, and then phi, which is the flux, over A is actually B. I come up with this expression, which is the same thing as here, except I've changed sort of uh, variables here. And if I take out this phi outside, I find that I have phi, which is the magnetic flux, times these two terms, which are defined as reluctance. Okay, reluctance is 1 over the total mu A, instead of the bundle of flux here that I'm talking about, and L is the path here. Okay, each section has its own magnetic path length. Okay, so reluctance is this expression. And the beauty is that um, I can describe then the circuit like a electrical circuit in which the current of magnetic motive force is uh, a voltage source, the reluctance are resistors, and phi is actually like a current. So this is like Ohm's law you can use here in order to understand what is really going on. It is especially important when you have reluctances in parallel because then this MMF, this current generating the magnetic motive force, uh, is now splitting the flux between these reluctances. The smaller the reluctance, the larger will be the part of the flux passing through it. And this is because when the mu is high, that is the ferromagnetic material, for example, it's like a better conductor to a magnetic flux. So this is why here the resistance is small, and in airs, for example, the resistance is high. Okay, so this is a very simple concept, uh, very useful, because then I can look now at a system like this, okay? What I have here is a bus bar. There is a sensor sitting on it, and then there is a shield, like a U-shaped shield here, made of ferromagnetic material with a permeability, relative permeability, much larger than one, okay? Like a ferrite composition that have high permeability and are good in the terms of uh, having a 
high magnetic saturation level. So in this case, if I look at this bus bar and assume that there is a current here, and I'm going through this path here, then I'm passing through two parts with different reluctances. The reluctance here is very small because the permeability is high. The reluctance here is that of air. So the MMF, the current, is equal to the flux times the total of the reluctances, which is air plus ferrite. The ferrite is very small, so I'm left with the reluctance of air, and therefore here is the reluctance of air times phi, which is then expressed, can be expressed as the B over mu sub zero, and then this is the length here, this is W, the path here, and this brings about this relationship saying that B is equal to I, this is the current here, times mu sub zero, this is the permeability in air, this is this air here, and divided by the length here, or the width of this opening. So this is a very simple way to analyze the circuit and to get an expression for the expected magnetic flux density here in this region. Another aspect of this U-shaped uh, element is shielding. Because if I have this uh, element here, which has high permeability, and I suppose I have now a current passing through this uh, bus bar, and here is a magnetic flux passing here. When it comes here, it would prefer to go through this low reluctance rather than going through here. Because through here, it will be like through air, and the reluctance is much higher. And obviously, like in the case of uh, uh, resistance, it will prefer the lowest resistance. So the pass will be like here. And the same thing goes, for example, for this uh, line here. It'll go like that rather than through the unit. And because, the, again, the reluctance here is much lower than the path here. So therefore, we see that this U-shaped uh, element uh, can serve as a shield to protect this sensor from the magnetic field generated by a nearby conductor. And here is an example. Here I have three bus bars and I'm passing a current through one of them. And here and here there's no current, while here we have 100 amp. Now what I see is the B lines, okay, are going this way. Some are going out, but primarily most of them are locked within this region because of the low reluctance of this uh, shield here, okay? And I find that the magnetic flux density here is 8 millitesla. Now, based on the expression we have developed earlier, I understand that B should be equal to mu sub zero times the current divided by the length here, the width here, which is 15 millimeter. And from this uh, rough calculation, I find 8 millitesla, which is very close to, uh, of course, uh, in fact, it's identical to uh, what is shown here with this uh, simulation, finite element simulation. And then in this case, we see that the coupling is lower, that is the crosstalk. We find here 0.3 and we find here 0.1, uh, these are then also protected by this shield. Comparing it to what we had before, here now we have a much higher, this is now with the shield it's 8, uh, here it is 0.8 as compared to 2.7, and here it's 0.3 as compared to 8. So there is definitely a attenuation of this crosstalk between the units. Now look at the lines of the B, the B lines. Here we see one going like this, and then you can see this one is going like this. So this is because, again, the reluctance of this uh, ferrite is much lower than air, and therefore uh, this would be a preferred path here and here. 
We can see this uh, shielding effect very nicely if we consider a case in which we have another, say, bus bar with 100 amp. There is no current here. And we see here the B lines, okay? And you can see very clearly the here, this B line here goes here, and then it goes into the ferrite or ferromagnetic material, I should say, not necessarily ferrite, and then going out this because this is the uh, lowest uh, resistance or lowest reluctance path here. And the same thing goes for say, this line here. You see it goes like this, it does not go like into the unit, but rather through the low reluctance here, and then it comes back like this. So this shows very nicely the effect of the shield and the improvement you, you get in terms of the uh, coupling or the crosstalk between the units so that uh, they will not be affected by an adjacent uh, current carrying uh, conductor. And in this case we find that uh, this 100 amp is causing like 0.1 millitesla here, 0.05 here, and 0.1 here, which is really low as compared to the 8 millitesla that we'll get here for 100 amp. Still, the shielding is not perfect. There is a crosstalk, there is a coupling, but uh, this is certainly an improvement as compared to the case in which there is no shield around the conduct. Now up to now I've shown simulation for the DC case. When you have an AC, like if it'll be like a phase current uh, of a motor, obviously there is a sinusoidal waveform or trapezoidal waveform. And uh, in this case, situation is a bit different. It's more harsh because the AC now is inducing an alternating field which is affecting more the neighboring units. So you can see that, well, here I am getting 7.3, but lo and behold, I'm getting here 2.5 millitesla, and this will be for two kilohertz signal. Two kilohertz can be expected in, say, a motor drive. So this is something that one has to take into account that at high frequency, the coupling is stronger and perhaps additional shielding should be included. There is, however, another family of sensor. In fact, they've been announced not too long ago, and that is by Allegro, and there's another company, uh, Infineon, which is making a similar unit. This unit is intended to be used in a coreless application as opposed to the case of the other unit that Allegory has been traditionally producing in which the current is passing through the sensor, okay? Allegro has been in the market for a long time now producing a current sensor in which the current has to pass through the unit itself. This is uh, not the case here. Again, we have a fairly high sensitivity. For example, for this particular unit, we have uh, something like 200 millivolt per millitesla. Here it's uh, millivolt per gauss. 10,000 gauss are one tesla. So this is a fairly high sensitivity to 200 millivolt. Again, it's programmable. And the way it is uh, designed is somewhat different from what we've seen earlier. Here, the sensitivity is vertical, like this. It's sitting flat here, but the sensitivity here to the B flux is vertical. Not only that, it's differential. That is, the directions are, the polarities are in opposite direction. That is, the, say, positive polarity is for a B like this, and positive polarity is for a B like this. This is, therefore, useful in the case that the unit is placed on a, say, a neck here. This is the bus bar. This is like a notch here. And here is the neck. And then it's sitting on it, okay, across this neck here. And the flux is passing this way. So therefore it's going one way here and the other way here. So it's encircling the unit, which is sitting here 
across this uh, bridge. Now the advantage of this unit, of course, is that it's now rejecting a common magnetic flux. That is, if you have B going this direction, then it's B in the right direction here, but in opposite direction here. And since the unit is sort of adding plus and minus, these two effects will be subtracted. So this unit is immune to whatever extent it is designed to, to a common field here, common magnetic field, while sensitive to one which is encircling this unit itself. So th potentially this unit will be more immune to uh, fields generated by, say, outside sources like currents passing through conductors in nearby this unit. And here are some other ways to implement it, for example, in this form, which is sort of sitting above, there is an opening here, so the magnetic field is going this way, and then in this way, and therefore this unit again sees the direction of the magnetic field at the right direction. And here is also another way of doing it, again, you have a magnetic field like here, and then it's like here, so therefore you have this uh, two, this, this bi-directional uh, operation. Now the inner circuit of this unit includes the two sensors, which are sort of a uh, inner div differential mode, so that a common mode will be sort of subtracted out. Uh, there is an amplifier, this is the current source, again, it's programmable, so it has some logic uh, unit in it, so you can prog program it from here. It's very similar in this sense, but again, the operation is different from what I've shown earlier. And here is the recommended method of uh, implementation. Here we have a bus bar, here we have the two notches, this is the neck here, so the unit will be sitting across it. And here it is, I'm seeing here like a cross section here. This is the neck here, the sensor is sitting here, the current is causing this uh, magnetic field around it, and the sensor is seeing the field one direction, and then in the other direction, as it is designed for. Now, Allegro also prepared a calculator for bus bar, in which you can put the dimensions, you can select the unit, actually there are two units with different uh, sensitivities, and you can select the unit here, and then the dimension of this bus bar, and you get here the sensitivity, and then you get the output voltage uh, that you'd expect from the particular unit that you have chosen, which is, of course, very, very nice. And we can see it here enlarged. Here is the bus width. This is the bus thickness, uh, the PCB thickness, and this is the notch width and the notch length, and here you have the outputs, uh, the maximum current, and also the sensitivity in millivolt per amp, okay? So this is very nice and uh, can, can be very useful in the design state. This is 20, this unit has a 20 millivolt per gauss, which is 200 millivolt per millitesla, okay? So this will be the sensitivity of this particular unit, which again is programmer. So this brings me to the end of this uh, presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you find it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.